tonight on Nate Newswatch. Will your grades affect your post-secondary school's budget? The UCP government brings down performance-based funding. What will happen to the funding if an institution is performing less than required? It's a dangerous disease. How is the spread of the coronavirus impacting Nate and Edmonton? I believe uh, we can get through of it. And Suk Sham Shan goes scuba diving in this week's End Zone Challenge. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. Alberta's provincial government has introduced a new plan on funding post-secondary institutions. Starting April 1st, universities, colleges and polytechnics will be funded based on an institution's performance metrics. UVA Weijian Johnny joins us live from South Lobby with more on that story. This new method of funding post-secondary students, post-secondary institutions based on their performance has brought some misunderstanding on some students and also some instructors, they are questioning it. It is a usual day at night in a tender class, but the instructor is so worried about the future of the program. Oh, I would definitely need someone to try explain where they saw the pros. Um, I'm seeing the challenges right now and don't see how it would benefit us. Alberta is the first province in Canada to implement a performance-based funding system, while Ontario is also moving towards it. That is also a little bit problematic because uh, Alberta is quite diversified in terms of type of institutions and their size and their programming. So it's better to consult with each and every institution uh, separately. Provincial government says performance measures will encourage institutions to improve services, increase efficiency and create opportunities for our patterns. Related to schools means that the schools that already have funding and are therefore doing well are getting more funding, which they don't need. The schools that are doing poorly and having poor results need the funding. And Student organization like needs are a neutral. They believe it's still premature to point fingers. I think that right now it's really uh, difficult to give a positive or a negative opinion about the performance-based metrics because we actually don't know what the metrics are quite yet. For secondary sector, we are all for transparency and accountability. The, um, the, uh, the, amount, the amount of funding tied to this uh, performance outcome will start at 15 percent of this current budget of 2020 to 2021 and gradually increase to a maximum of 40 percent on the current budget of 2022 to 2023. So Uvi, what statement has Nate made about this? Yes, yes, Nick. Nate has given us a statement which says they are going through the budget, they want, they want to understand the budget fully, so what it means to them. And nevertheless, Nate is proud to produce better in, uh, uh, graduates. The, Nate is proud to meet the standards of his, his students and also the standards of the industry. The performance-based funding system is being adopted from elsewhere, is it not? Yes, Kalen. Uh, 35 states in U.S. they are using the system, and also in Europe, um, countries in Europe like Belgium, they are also using the system. But there is a concern about this. Say, there is a, it shows that uh, institutions can easily manipulate the data so that they can meet the standards while the quantity hasn't changed. Thanks, Uviwe. That's Uviwe Ninjani reporting live from the South Lobby tonight. It's becoming the highest health scar scare since SARS. The new coronavirus from Wuhan, China, seems to be spreading internationally. The virus has made its way to China, causing panic for some Canadians. Jory Aclarino joins us live with more on how it's impacting Edmontonians. Thanks, guys. I'm here in Chinatown right now, where most of the conversation is focused around the new outbreak. Although Edmonton is a long way from Wuhan, China, many are worried about how fast the disease is spreading. 
<coughs> it appears like any common cold, but this new virus can be fatal. There are three confirmed cases of the virus in Canada, and some fear that the number is growing. Public health officials are monitoring for potential cases of coronavirus in Alberta while working closely with World Health Authorities to share info and assess potential health risks. We use that plan for any infectious disease emergency that requires that response. And so we do have those systems in place. Alberta Health Services is a provincial organization. And again, we work closely with them to ensure that, uh, that they're uh, able to respond. A few airlines, including Air Canada and Cathay Pacific, are canceling select flights because of the virus. Foreign exchange students from China attending Nate are concerned about the source of the virus back home. They aren't from Wuhan, but they realize this threat has no borders. I believe uh, we can get through of it uh, because many doctors and nurses are still uh, working in the hospital to save the patients. If you uh, do not have urgent things, maybe you should just uh, stay at home and not uh, try to fly to Canada or foreign countries. There has been a total of 171 deaths so far globally, and infectious disease specialists are still working on a cure. Late this week, the GHO met and officially made the novel coronavirus a global threat emergency, not because of China's handling of the disease, but more due to the weak healthcare system of other countries. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Jory. That's Jory Ocaruno reporting. You're watching Nate News Watch, the next generation of news. Graduating students of 2020 are now able to get a head start on their job search after Nate hosted its annual career fair earlier this month. Nate laid out the welcome mat to businesses, giving students from over 140 programs the opportunity to meet and connect with industry workers and potential employers. Both graduating and new students are able to attend in order to get an idea of job preferences and possibly apply, although technology is becoming a more favorable application process. For the most part, things are digital and online, so the easiest thing to do is be ready to do some research for each of the companies as you see what they are, and approach with a good attitude, make sure that you look like you're putting a little bit of effort in, but most places don't want to handle paper anymore. Nate Student Services is available for those who didn't attend to help students with their job hunt. An Edmonton graduate from Ross Shepherd High School is a finalist for the Loran Awards. Sumaya Sophie is a student from Ross Shepherd that is now a finalist for the Loran Awards. The Loran Awards acknowledges leadership, character, and service in an undergraduate from Canada. Sumia gave us insight on how she kept motivated. If you can do it, definitely do it. Don't hold yourself back in that sense. And like be involved. So that's like one of the things that really pushed me um, to doing a lot of the things that I got accomplished. Sumia has worked really hard for this award by helping her school and her community in many ways. She left for Toronto this Thursday to, to the national selections. Here's hope she will bring home an award. Police investigation is underway now that memorial bench plaques are being stolen around Edmonton's River Valley. Over 120 memorial plaques have been stolen off benches in Edmonton's River Valley area. Plaques were stolen from benches lining Grant Notley Park and Victoria Promenade. Families are given the opportunity to honor a loved one with memorial benches and temporarily it's unavailable for the city to admire. I think it's really awful, obviously, that has a lot of meaning to a lot of people who lost people and it's actually really cruel-hearted to take something like that, so whoever did it, I hope they put it back. Families and owners of stolen plaques are being contacted about the situation. With all plaques planning to be replaced, the City of Edmonton says it will cost between ten dollars to $14,000. The new regional transit service won't be fully implemented till 2021. The new Edmonton transit system is looking to improve the amount of municipalities that it can reach. However, the amount of time needed to implement this system may take longer than some people may have hoped for. 
you know, a, a lot of the other municipalities, they'll fully upload their entire, entire transit system on day one. Uh, Edmonton's meant to come a few, few years later, so some of our service will be uploaded on the first day, but everything will take a few extra years. The system won't be fully implemented until 2021. This will connect the whole Edmonton region into one transit system, accelerating and improving the Edmonton transit through all forms of transportation until the city will slowly bring in more municipalities into the Edmonton Transit. You can now purchase cannabis edibles off the shelves, if you're quick enough. Since the second wave of legalization, cannabis edibles have become very high in demand and can be difficult to find on shelves. Nemo Cannabis, a local cannabis company in Edmonton, receives new stock once a week, but sometimes sells out in two days. Quite frankly, there's a lot of people don't want to smoke the cannabis. They understand smoking is unhealthy and oil's been around for a while, but there's just something enjoyable about eating candy or chocolates to get yourself high. Because of the different types of edibles, accessibility of them and how easy they are to consume, they will continue to be scarce among shelves. Edmonton's recent weather has left the roads in pretty harsh conditions lately. Edmonton has been experiencing some really funky weather lately. From brutal cold temperatures to snowstorms, ice and snow alike have been destroying our roads. How will the city respond to the amount of snow lately? Our, our primary goal throughout the winter is to ensure safe and reliable travel across the transportation network, including roads, bike lanes, sidewalks, uh, throughout the winter season. And then as we sort of transition from winter to summer, that's where we start doing things like our spring sweep cleanup, where we're getting some of that sand and, and grit material off the road that we put down throughout the winter. Be sure to have winter tires and drive slowly. There are still some areas that have not been fully cleared yet and may cause danger if driving unprepared. Coming up after the break, a rising star with the Oilers organization returns to Nate to spread some inspiration. This week's great grad story shows where Nate can take you. It's always special coming back to Nate. Uh, I'm a proud Nate alumnus. Next up right after this break, I go for a swim at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> Just now, we've been enjoying a bit of a warm period, right on the tails of the coldest temperatures that we've experienced this century. After the break, I'll tell you what to expect this weekend in your Nate Newswatch weather forecast. The Nate Nugget is your Nate student newspaper. Join us every Tuesday from 12 to 1 for a free lunch, workshops, and tips to improve your writing and to pick up an article. You'll get paid up to $15 for every article that you write. Join us in room E102 or come say hi at our new office in O105. The Nate Nugget. Well, Callan, it seems like we're through the worst of the winter for this year. You may be right, Nick. Mickey says he hasn't been out in the sun for so long, he's starting to believe that he's a vampire. Now that you say that, he has been looking a little pale, but Mickey Streen has a little more color in his face today and joins us in studio for your weekend forecast. Thank you kindly, my friends. I did go to the doctor about it, but she doesn't believe me. She says to just try to get some more sun, but that might be difficult because the sun seems to have only been here for a short visit. You know, we're getting to that time of year where it's really cold in the morning and then it warms up in the afternoon. But this weekend, we're going to see a reverse of that with a warmish morning and a nasty cold front hitting us in the middle of Saturday. And we're all going to see a lot of snow and rain. But let's get into some specifics. In Calgary on Saturday, we're going to see a mostly cloudy day with a 60% chance of that rain snow mix. The morning is going to be four and in afternoon, we're going to see it hit zero. On Sunday, it's partly cloudy, low of minus 10 and an afternoon high of minus minus six. In Jasper on Saturday, it's mostly cloudy there as well. Possibility of five to 10 centimeters of snow in the morning there. It's going to be two. And in the afternoon, we're going to see it hit minus four. So again, those temperatures are dropping. On Sunday, it's mainly sunny. Morning low of minus 17. Afternoon high is minus six. 
And in Fort McMurray on Saturday, it's going to be mostly cloudy there as well with a 60 percent chance of snow. Risk of heavy snow there as well, so be aware of that. It's going to be windy. The morning is going to be a zero and the afternoon is going to hit minus six. And on Sunday, it's mostly cloudy there. Morning low of minus 15, afternoon high of minus 13. And coming home into Edmonton, where we're so lucky, we're going to get everything. On Saturday, it's mostly cloudy and windy with a 60 percent chance of that rain snow mix. It's going to be nasty. The more morning is going to be four and the afternoon is going to hit minus two on Sunday. It's going to be partly cloudy morning low of minus 10 afternoon high of minus five. So it's actually not so bad. If you look at our overall record temperatures here, there's a huge range of temperature possibilities this time of year. So Alberta, what can you say? You never know what to expect. Speaking of what to expect, it's Groundhog Day on Sunday, and a couple of these adorable fuzzy creatures are going to be trying to predict the length of winter based on shadow divination, uh, which is a term that I just made up. Don't quote me on that. My prediction is that we can count on that extra six weeks of winter. In Edmonton, winter ending in mid-March would actually not be so bad, but I'll leave it up to you to decide which fuzzy forecaster you want to trust. Thanks for tuning in to your Nate Newswatch weather forecast. My name is Mickey Streen. Newswatch Weather, sponsored by NR92, Campus Radio. Have you ever wanted to go back to your college days? Well, one Nate grad, Tony Brar, did. To inspire students and encourage them to go after their dreams, we have Calandra Ogilvie with more on that. And again, chasing that dream, and I lost it. Oilers reporter Tony Brar returned home this week where his dream began. A packed crowd stared on as he urged them to make the most of their opportunities and dreams. It's always special coming back to Nate. Uh, I'm a proud Nate alumnus and just having the opportunity to share my experiences and hoping people can resonate with me is uh, an opportunity that I'll never forget. Brar graduated from Nate's business program in 2016 with hopes of being an accountant. With help from one of his instructors, Wes Salenbach, he was able to realize his dream of working for the Oilers and switched into Nate's radio and television program, where he graduated in 2018. For me, it's not about it's not about test scores. It's not about kind of getting caught up in the everyday. It's about helping students, in my view, really ask the question, uh, what's coming next? What is my dream? And to what extent and in what ways is this process moving me closer toward that dream? And this is where it all started. Tony Barr posted on his Instagram back in January 2017, where he listed his top dream jobs. Number one was working for the Oilers. Today, he travels and creates content for the team. Lifelong dream. Um, when I was a kid, I always pictured myself uh, wearing a suit with the Oilers pin, and I'm proud to say that I am now. Nate has had a series of motivational speakers, including Olympic athlete Akeem Haynes, in order to engage and encourage students. Kalandra Ogilvy, Nate Newswatch. The Nate hockey teams are really making a strong push for the playoffs. Absolutely. Sukhsham has that and much more and of what's happening in the sports world. Thanks guys. With one month left in the regular season, the men's, the Nate men's hockey team is 4-2 since the start of the new year. And the women's team has a 3-3 three three record during the same stretch. However, both teams are coming off a loss from last Saturday. The women's team lost a 3-1 game against the McEwen Griffins and the men's team dropped a 1-0 game to Red Deer College. But they're putting that behind them as they're keeping their eyes on the big prize. Our first priority is being the best teammate you can be. And then the second one was win an ACC championship. Like, there's no question about that. The championship. <laughs> one word, it's easy. Um, it's kind of our goal. Um, it's our goal uh, every year, past couple years, since the start of the year, it's been our goal. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what we want. People all across the world were shocked with the sudden tragic death of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna last Sunday. The Nate men's basketball team are celebrating the life of a legend and the impact Kobe had on them in his 41 years of life. They're, you know, these guys are about 19 to 24, 25 years of age, all of them. So when they were kids, Kobe was, was the man. He was the best player in the world for uh, quite a long stretch. The emptiness that I feel is like, kind of like the same emptiness I feel when my, my dad passed away a few months ago. Just because, like I said, growing up, I, that's all I knew was Kobe was my favorite player. Kobe Bryant is just like greatness. He's greatness personified, a winner, a hard worker. You know, it shows in everything that he does. 
On to a more lighthearted topic, the Oil Kings faced a tough task this Tuesday to stop the Red Hot Brandon Wheat Kings, who were coming into Rogers Place with 10 wins in their last 11 games. Both teams started off playing some tight checking hockey as we saw some good defensive plays early on from both of them. We also saw some key saves from both of the goaltenders as well, but with 10 minutes to go, it was Vincent Iorio who takes a harmless looking shot at the net, which is tipped by Ben McCartney for his 18th goal of the season, giving the Wheat Kings a 1-0 lead. But the Oil Kings were given a power play about 2 minutes after that goal, as it's Iorio once again as he takes a tripping penalty this time. And on the ensuing power play, the Oil Kings have some pressure, and we see forward Riley Sawchuk thinking of crashing the net, but he decides to open up for the one-timer instead, and that's a great decision, as he scores and ties the game at 1. Five minutes later, it was Sawchuk again who does a great job of opening up for a shot, and just like last time, he buries it to give the Oil Kings a 2-1 lead with three minutes to go in the first. In the second, it starts with David Cope, who finds himself behind his own net and makes a nifty little move to open up. He then lasers a rocket pass to Elistrov, who finds himself on a breakaway. He shows off his quick hands and tucks it past the goalie. Elistrov would score another one in the second to make it 4-1 for the home team. Oil Kings goalie Beck Warren was quite hot all night as well as he turned away 31 shots from the Wheat Kings. The Wheat Kings would score a goal in the third to make it 4-2. But Matthew Robertson, who recently signed an entry-level contract with the New York Rangers, finds himself on the side of the net and he scores to seal the deal for the Oil Kings. The Oil Kings win this game 6-2 and put a stop to the point streak of the Wheat Kings, who had points in 11 straight games coming into town. Here's Riley Sawchuk after that game. Yeah, again, we always talk about these, this back nine where we're focusing and, and trying to play every game like it's a playoff game. And there's something about exploring underwater in ocean and lakes that has always intrigued me. Maybe it's the thrill of going under and seeing something new, or the thrill of not knowing what to expect, or maybe what underwater creatures I will run into next. But to get to that level of scuba diving, I must explore the local pool first. I had the opportunity to take a beginner scuba diving class with Stuart Sarah Duke, who's an instructor at the Dive Outfitters in Edmonton. A big hats off to them and Stuart for making this happen. They've explored many lakes and oceans and can teach you how to as well. So I asked Stuart, how did he get into scuba diving? One of those things that I always wanted to do, it was on my bucket list and one year a buddy and I just like, let's do it. We're just gonna sign up and just do it. So I asked my girlfriend at the time, hey, you wanna do it? She's like, yeah, let's do it. So we did it and then got hooked. So what are your tips for a beginner like me before I jump into the water? Jump into the water, that's it. So after I got familiar with the equipment, I jumped into the water. Or maybe got tossed into the water per se. And with a few more minor adjustments, I was ready to learn the basics of scuba diving. Stuart showed me how to breathe comfortably underwater. He also taught me how to switch to my backup mouthpiece for air and how to clean my goggles out in case some water goes inside them. And as expected, it wasn't the easiest thing at first. I found myself quite overwhelmed at times. What's the number one rule? Blow bubbles. Blow bubbles was not the number one rule. Well, yeah, yeah, don't hold your breath. Oh, never you, hold your you breath. You were holding your breath. You broke the rule. Oh, so I could have died. But after learning that lesson, and also about buoyancy, which refers to how you float underwater using the diving equipment, I was finally ready to go to the deep end. And that's when the fun began. It was a surreal feeling to be able to breathe underwater and be so in control in a position that you would usually panic in. This is something I recommend to almost everyone, unless you are claustrophobic. Defining my basic skills and becoming a better diver is something I'm definitely going to take a look into. And who knows, maybe one day I'll be seeing some exotic underwater creatures. This is Sukhsham Shan with Nate Newswatch. So Sukhsham, just being one month into the second half of the season, how do you think the Ooks hockey teams are looking going into the end of the regular season? So I had a great chance to talk to both of the coaches from the teams. I get a feeling that the women's team has to come together in the locker room before they make a push for the playoffs. But the men's team, they're quite confident in their ability to make the playoffs. They're actually expecting to go on a long run. I gotta ask Sukhsham, scuba diving looks so fun and I just want to know, what was the hardest thing you found about it? Mouth breathing. The fact that I had to breathe through my mouth the whole time was very hard for me. I found myself at times breathing through my nose and it would fog up my goggles. Hmm. Coming up after the break, Johnny Koitsa joins us with entertainment. Thank <laughs> you.
I'm Jonathan Felitza, and in entertainment this week, Broadway Across Canada has announced when they're coming to town. I have that and more <laughs> Every time after I the know. break. You're watching Nate News Watch, the next generation of news. Let's check in with Johnny to see how the Reno show went this weekend. Sounds like Johnny got to do something pretty fun beforehand. It's time for entertainment. Thanks guys, Nate Newswatch was invited to destroy the decade for the Reno show and I destroyed more than just the decade. The Reno show put on a media event at Axe Monkeys Edmonton to destroy a bunch of furniture and glass related items. The furniture was donated by Habitat for Humanity and all of it was able to be destroyed. One of the event coordinators told us the reason why they decided to do a rage room this year. So we decided to do a rage room because we know that when you're doing a renovation oftentimes you're demoing your home and not a lot of people get the chance to you know take a bat and take it to the wall. If you like destroying things maybe renovating your place or go to a rage room if you don't have that kind of money. If renovation is in your future then the reno show was for you and there was an exhibit that had a lot of people talking that was done by Nate. Nate Carpenter Apprentices was building two playhouses that were being raffled off, as well as toolboxes without any nails. This was to get eyes on the program, as well as give practice for the Carpenter Apprentices for the Skills Canada competition. Andrick, one of the competitors for the Skills, explains how long they've been working on their projects. Uh, we started them, I want to say we started about late November, but we haven't worked, we work on them only a couple hours a week. The provincial skills competition that Andrick and many other competitors are practicing for starts May 6th. Need some ideas for date night? Or are you a fan of Broadway musicals? Because Broadway Across Canada is coming to Edmonton and I got the schedule for you. They start with Jesus Christ Superstar from November 10th to the 15th of this year. Anastasia in January 12th to 17th of 2021. Come From Away in Town March 13th to April 4th, 2021. And ending with Hamilton. Hamilton will be in town July 27th to August 15th. I'm thinking past tomorrow. Season packages are available for purchase at Broadway Across Canada .ca and by phone. If you got nothing planned this weekend, then the novel turned movie called The Rhythm Section makes its silver screen debut tonight. The Rhythm Section is an international spy thriller that follows the story of Stephanie Patrick, a woman who uncovers the truth behind a plane crash that killed her family three years earlier. After she discovers that the crash was not accidental, she embarks on a mission to track those that are responsible by assuming the identity of an assassin. We have a pair of tickets for you to win, and all you have to do is answer this question and tweet it at us at Nate Newswatch. Who is Blake Lively's husband in real life? I hope you got some ideas that will get you active or out of your house or working on it this coming months. Now back to the guys at the desk. And that's our show for this week. Thanks for watching. Check out some articles and join us next week on natenewswatch.ca. Oh my God. Good work.